what it is. So moral story is Ohio State needs Florida State to get beat. Moral story. They need Florida State to get beat and probably Texas to lose. I think Texas Big 12 champs would jump over Ohio State in a, as long as um, – I don't think if Washington loses to Oregon, I don't think they get in. So that's what Ohio State needs to make the playoffs. But I want to talk for a minute about my film review. I've seen the Austin Wards of the world basically blaming everyone but Kyle McCord. And I will go on record and say, after breaking down the entire offensive game film, the defense is coming tomorrow. After breaking down the entire offensive game film, that's by far his worst game he's ever played. He was missing throws, missing reads. We just put the one clip out. There's five other ones where it's a simple concept smash high low the corner just read the corner and Kyle doesn't even take a drop and just throws it right now and Julian Fleming can be seen flexing and screaming like what are we doing it he played really bad and that's okay to say I also saw Kyle McCord's dad put out the quote the man in the arena quote I love that quote and I I, I said it in our general chat if I was Kyle McCord's dad if this was Cameron Smith I would absolutely have a real conversation with him about how he played and where where he thinks he needs to get better, what his mindset's like, what it's like moving forward. But I would also do exactly what what uh, what I don't even know, know his name. Kyle McCord's dad is doing. I would I would talk to him about the man in the arena. Like it it's easy for me to sit here and be critical. Now I actually know what I'm talking about. Most of these media members don't even fucking can't. One, they don't have the film. Two, they can't watch the film. But there is something to be said about block out the noise. St stay focused on your grind and your development. And focus on getting better. If you focus on the noise, you're not going to get better. So that I, I love that tweet. I had no problem with him tweeting it out. I know some, some people that think Kyle played bad are like, this guy's making excuses. No, he's not. He's being a dad. Come on, man. What if that was your kid? I would I would not say, you're fine. It was Emeka's fault. He dropped. I would not give my kid excuses. We're going to have real conversations about what reality is. But then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach him through it as a parent, right? Help him navigate what is treacherous waters. It's a lot of stress being the starting quarterback at Ohio State, and it's what you're well compensated. It comes with the the job description and the territory. But I, I don't, I don't, I'm not with the outrage that Kyle McCord's dad is somehow making excuses. I don't see that. I also think there's a lot of guys that can help Kyle out. I thought the line played just average. Um, there was a a nice window there where they were pounding the shit out of the ball and blocking really well. They started off the first three drives-ish and weren't, were, were mis-IDing, not, blo not blocking well. Michigan's defensive front definitely won the batter, battle early. Then Ohio, I think Ohio State kind of took the momentum from them. They were winning up front, and then the last drive obviously just had one pass pro breakdown. But I don't know if we're in that scenario if Kyle reads out the very first play. Um, you see it. They run the same concept twice in a row. The first one, he just checks it down right now for no reason. The next one, he drops a dime to Marv on a corner route. The first one should have went to the corner route too. So not to get play specific, but that's just what uh kind of where where I'm at with Kyle McCord. Wanted to address that. Also, we got to help Kyle out a little bit. Where like the perimeter lack of perimeter runs, the lack of screens, and the drops. That's you want to help out a quarterback that maybe isn't the the best rookie quarterback in the history of the NFL. Let's run the ball in the perimeter, spread the defense out a little bit. Not make them so packed in where it's harder to pick up blitzes and identify blitzes. We got to do that. Travion Henderson averages over 10 yards a carry on the perimeter run. In that game, he averaged four, four yards per carry. That's a massive difference. Only three, three runs on the perimeter at that. It starts with receivers blocking and then some game plan things to get him out there. That's what has to happen. Um, the screen game. We, we can't block on the perimeter, so we can't run bubbles. We can't run smokes. It's hard to run tailback and tight end screens. Um, Kyle has the 19th lowest percentage of throws behind the line of scrimmage in America. I mean, if you chart all his throws, he has the 19th lowest number of screens as a percentage of all his throws. So just not, not helping him out with little easy completions that get yards. And we're going to talk some other, about some other quarterbacks that have high percentages on screens. And then ball reception. The receiving group, not receivers. This is including tight ends, G. Scott, Cade Stover, the running backs. The 11th, they're 11th in the Big Ten with 16 drops. And Marv leads the team with six. Now he gets fed the ball. He's severely favored when it comes to targets. But 16 drops is too many for this receiving core. That's kind of my thoughts on offense. I'll give you my thoughts on defense after, we've, after I break down the, the, the defensive film for you. 
it'll it'll come out tomorrow morning. I'm going to bring it down tonight um, and, and put it out tomorrow morning. But anyways, just wanted to address that after studying the game film. I also want to talk about the Heisman Trophy because I'm sure Chris is going to bring up the odds. I don't even know what they are. But I'm going to tell you why Jaden Daniels has to win the award. I saw a bunch of people tweeting that Marv should win it. That's that's audacious. But I get it. Buckeye fans see this incredible talent, and they just can't seem to figure out what the Heisman is, I guess. But here's here's why Jaden Daniels should win the Heisman Trophy. 69.1% adjusted completion percentage on deep balls. We're going to start there because that's the highest in the country. And second in the country is Bo Nix. Jaden Daniels is 10, <coughs> 10% higher than Bo Nix. 69.1% adjusted is the highest in the last 10 years. It might be the highest in the history of college football, but they haven't been tracking it longer than 10 years. Jaden Daniels is throwing a deep ball better than anyone we've seen in college football in the last decade. Insanity. It's insane to be at almost 70% on deep balls. It's nuts. 24.5 24.5 yards per attempt on deep balls is four yards more per deep ball than the number two quarterback, Jalen Milrow. 24.5 yards per attempt. 11.2 yards per attempt versus blitz is number one in the country. When teams blitz Jalen Daniels, he absolutely takes their fucking soul from them. So that leads the country with, and he also leads the country with 21 touchdowns thrown against blitz defense with zero interceptions. We're going to hold against this kid that LSU's defense is ass. He's an elite athlete. I mean, just look at when he's under pressure. He's the second most productive in Power 5 at 10.9 yards per attempt. He has over 1,100 rushing yards, 10 rushing touchdowns, 8.4 yards per attempt on the ground is the second highest in Power 5. And if you look at it, right, compare him to other athletic quarterbacks that were on teams with multiple losses that won the Heisman. The two that come to mind, Tim Tebow in uh, 2007, when we lost, I think, three games, Lamar Jackson at Louisville and Jaden Daniels. You go from rushing yards. Tebow had 895. Lamar had 1571, which is nuts. Jaden Daniels, 1134. But well, that was opportunity, right? Lamar ran the ball far more. Tebow averaged 4.3 yards per attempt. Lamar, 6.0. Jaden Daniels, 8.4. That's insane. Passing yards, Jaden Daniels got all of them. Tebow had 3,200. Lamar had 3,500. Jaden Daniels has 3,800. Passing touchdowns. Tebow had 32. Lamar had 30. Jaden Daniels had 40. Completion percentage. Not even close. Tebow 67%. Lamar 56%. Jaden Daniels 72%. And then yards per attempt through the air. 9.4 yards per attempt for Tebow. 8.7 yards per attempt for Lamar. 11.7 for Jaden Daniels. It's just nuts. And and all of those numbers are are. His overall picture are also better than Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. I can bore you with the stats, but he's got slightly less passing yards than both of them, but he averages two yards per attempt more than both Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. So when he throws it, he's has more production than them, and he's better than them at it. I mean, Michael Penix Jr. is completing 66% of his passes, so he has a higher completion percentage than him. He has more passing touchdowns than both of them. And neither of them add value with their legs. Jaden Daniels almost almost has 5,000 total yards, 4,946, with 50 total touchdowns that he either threw or ran into the end zone. Jaden Daniels has to win the Heisman Trophy. I don't know what we're talking about. This kid has been dynamic. And now if the Heisman goes to the best quarterback with the best defense, then give it to Bo Nix or give it – I mean, Bo Nix is the answer then. If it goes to the best player in college football, it's unequivocally Jaden Daniels. I don't, and I'm going to bet on it. I think the Heisman is going to get this one right. I'm going to put I'm going to put at least hundred dollars on Jaden Daniels to win the Heisman. I encourage you to do the same. The kid, the kid's been the, the best di- dual threat quarterback that we've seen. But just my thoughts. Well, I'm curious in the comments your thoughts. Will Jaden Daniels win the Heisman? Yes or no? Y or N? Let me know. Will he win the Heisman? All right. I want to talk a little bit. Bama, Georgia. The SEC matchup that could really shake shit up and knock somebody out of the playoffs, right? Because if Bama beats Georgia, I think they both get in. And that's going to not, I mean, barring uh, three undefeateds. I guess if you have Florida State, Washington, well, you can't have three, uh, and Michigan. You have those three undefeateds, then I think winner of Bama, Georgia gets in. Texas is is really, that's going to be a hell of a debate. One loss, Bama, SEC champ versus one loss, Texas, Big 12 champ. 
will be chaotic if that happens. But this is really a tale of two quarterbacks. Carson Beck is quietly, and we don't talk about him enough. No one talks about him enough. He's quietly one of the best quarterbacks in America. He absolutely will be the front runner to be the number one overall pick in next year's draft. I guess you could convince me maybe Shador will, will, will hold that title going into the year. But Carson Beck has been ridiculous. Third highest graded quarterback in Power 5. It goes Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, Carson Beck. I mean, that's the two Heisman front runners, And Carson Beck is third. Fourth highest completion percentage in America at 72.2%. Number one in SEC. Eighth most productive quarterback in America at 8.4 yards per attempt. He's, he has thrown a shitload of screens. So this is what I want to talk about because that's why you need to watch film. That's why you need to subscribe to the coach's film room. 23% of his attempts are behind the line of scrimmage. That doesn't, that's not to knock his, his production or performance, but he's throwing a shitload of screens and they're, they're working. That's the third most in, in, in power five football. 23% of his throws are behind the line of scrimmage. But he, he does have the second highest completion percentage on intermediate throws in America. And that's, when I look at it, deep balls take your life away. Those 10 to 20-yard throws, those are NFL throws, right? That's that 15-yard dig you got to rip on a rope. The 18-yard comeback, you got to throw a 30-yard 30 30 pass to, to get it 18 yards. Second highest in America. Really impressive. On the other side of the ball, you got Jalen Milrow. Still the lo uh, longest average depth of target in America at 13.9 yards. That's the average distance he throws every pass, right? Deep ball, short, average out. Highest adjusted completion percentage on short throws in America. Under, throws under 10 yards, he has 91% adjusted completion percentage. Do really, really well. Most productive quarterback in America under pressure, 11.0 yards per attempt. The kid's a freak. He gets under pressure. He can extend plays. He can jump into a scramble drill, and he's going to make you pay. He's phenomenal at it. He's also the second best deep ball thrower in America at 55% behind Jaden Daniels. It's those NFL throws that he can't make, whereas Carson Beck is the second best in the country at those 15-yard dig routes. Jalen Milrow's ninth in the SEC alone with a 55% completion percentage on those intermediate throws. And I think the real issue I have here is Tommy, the Tommy Reese effect, right? You have this dynamic athletic quarterback. You should have a great run game, right? How can you not help this kid throwing the football with play action pass and RPO? His pr completion percentage is 12.1% lower when there's some kind of run game aspect to it. That's the fourth worst in Power 5 football. Tommy Reese is doing an awful job helping this kid. The biggest difference between the two, part of it is Jalen Milrose athleticism, but Carson Beck, is he gets the ball out, man. He, under, he reads defenses quick. He gets through his progressions quick. He averaged 2.37 average time to throw. Seconds. 2.37 seconds. That's the first in the SEC, second fastest in the country. Jalen Milrow, 3.48 average uh, seconds uh, average time to throw. So 2.37, 3.48. That's last in the SEC, second to last in the entire Power Five. So part of it is him extending plays. The other is he doesn't get it out as fast. Could be problematic, right? When I look at this, this matchup, right, Georgia's offense, this model of efficiency, I mean, they're the fifth overall offense in the country, averaging 7.25 yards per play. Going against who I think is one of the better defenses in the country, certainly in, in the throw game. They're the 13th best passing defense in the country, 39th best rushing defense in the country. Bama's rush defense hasn't been great. It's just been decent. And Georgia's running the shit out of the ball. 9.3 yards per, per, per carry is, is ridiculous. That's almost uh, it's 11th in the country. But here's where Bama's defense struggles. Rush defense has just been okay, like I said. And Georgia has a top 15 rushing attack. And then big plays. They're 50th in America at preventing plays over 20 yards. Georgia has the ninth most big plays in the country. So that's where I kind of trend to the matchup favoring Georgia. Even though I love this Bama defense, I really think Georgia has an, an edge offensively with big plays, running the football, and Carson Beck just being an efficient quarterback. On the other side of the ball, when Bama has the ball, and, this, and kind of analyzing this Georgia defense, right? This Georgia defense is not the Georgia defense we've watched the last two years. I've said that time and time again. It still is true at this point in the season, after the regular season. They don't create turnovers. They're 104th in America. They don't disrupt offenses, right? They don't get you off schedule, much like Ohio State's defense. 67th in, in the country in sacks, 100th in the country in TFLs. 
and they aren't a good red zone defense, 67th in America. So there's a ton of weaknesses here on Georgia's defense. You look at Bama, 27th overall offense of the country, and what's wild is Jalen Milrow, who can't throw the ball, has the third best passing attack in the United States of, uh, in, in the United States of America. 10 yards per attempt, third in America. Completion percentage, 35th in America. Doesn't come not as efficient as some of these other passing offenses, but man, do they they make people pay. But what's shocking to me is Bama. I mean, you're talking about Trent Richardson, Derrick Henry, the the 53rd best rushing attack in the country. You would expect more out of Bama, and I think it speaks to Tommy Reese and his lack of ability to use RPOs and play action passes, right? If it looks like a run, it is a run. If it looks like a pass, it is a pass. It's just what it is. This Georgia defense is phenomenal against the throw game. So that's really strength on strength. They have a top five passing defense against a top five passing offense with Jalen Milrow. It's going to be a hell of a matchup. It's, and it's interesting. I always talk about sharp analytics. It's my favorite uh, metric to evaluate offense and defense because it ta- it, it's a formula that takes in drive efficiency, explosiveness, play efficiency, and negative drives. Defenses. Georgia has the 11th in the country. Bama 12th. Offenses. Georgia has the third best offense in the country. Bama 18th. I'm giving the nod to Georgia. I think they complete the job. I think they they go 13 and 0. I think I was wrong about them losing. I think they are going to beat Bama this weekend. I did want to mention, kind of by that same metric, the top offenses in the country: LSU one, Jaden Daniels, Heisman, strike a pose. Uh, Oregon two, Georgia three, Michigan six, Ohio State ten. So Ohio State ten, top ten offense, despite all the the negative negativity, uh, unfair negativity on Kyle McCord. And then the top defenses in the country, by the same metrics, regular season's over, 12 games in, Ohio State 1, Penn State 2, Clemson 3, Texas 4, Texas 4. Interesting. Quinn Ewers in the, and then packs that defense. Maybe it can make some noise in the playoffs. Iowa 5, Florida State 6, UCLA 7, Michigan 8, Oregon 9, and Notre Dame 10. That's the top 10 defenses in college football after 12 weeks. It's my favorite metric, and when I watch film, it checks out. So that's my coach's report. We'll get Chris back in here.